Hey everybody, Dave here from the Reserve Pool. You know, I did a lot of talking recently at an article on the blog about playing in limited formats. And we've also done a recent podcast episode about how you can evaluate cards when you're dealing with them in draft or uh, perhaps in sealed. And of course we have a blog post about sealed itself and how I think that can really be a fun way to play. Now the one advantage that I think that sealed has over other formats is that with a draft, if you only have two people, it's really hard to draft well. Um, you're you're going to have a very limited grouping of cards available to you. But if you play sealed, it, you are going to only have 12 packs and only have those, uh, those cards to work with no matter what you do. So I had 12 booster packs. I opened them all. I sorted the cards. Here's some proof that, you know, I actually had boosters. I didn't just pick a random 12 cards. Uh, though you could do that. You could do that. Uh, we have plenty of random set generators out there that will adjust for rarity, and you can play a sealed game off of those. But in any case, I did sort out the dice and cards alphabetically. Well, the dice aren't alphabetical, but the cards are. And I'm going to show you what I pulled right now. Black Panther, Wakanda Chief, Captain America, Superhero, two of the Captain America Uncommon, Cerebro, Supercomputer, Cerebro, Cybernetic Intelligence, Emma Frost, Arch Villain, Magneto, Hellfire Club, Marvel Girl, Superhero, Mr. Sinister, Nasty Boy, two Mr. Sinister Arch Villains, Mystic U, Mystique, Ageless, Nammer, the Submariner, Professor X Trainer, Professor X Recruiting Young Mutants, Hulk, or Rolk rather, T-Bolt Ross, Scarlet Witch, Wanda Maximoff, Sentinel Mutant Hunter, Storm, Weather Witch, Toad, Tongue Lashing, X-23, Scent of Murder, Vision, Android, and Vision, Destiny Control. All right, so what are we doing with all of that? Well, again, I've talked about Limited lately. We're going to take these cards and say, if I was playing Limited, what would my team be? And we're going to use some of the card evaluation strategies that we've talked about recently uh, in episodes of the podcast. So if you didn't listen to this podcast about quadrant theory, you really should. It's something that we borrowed from Magic the Gathering, and I really think it has a lot of value here. Um, in constructed formats, your combo either fires or it doesn't. Uh, the two board states on either side with either player, they rarely interact. But in a draft format or in a sealed format, in these limited games, it matters a whole lot more because you don't have the best of everything all the time available to you. Um, in these kinds of cases, the skill of the person drafting and then their, uh, you know, in terms of picking the right kind of cards at the right times, as well as the skill of um, of that person and putting the deck together and actually utilizing the things that he or she has drafted, that's what really shines there. Constructed, I mean, I, I'm not saying that they're easy to play, but I think that if you give some, if you teach somebody the rules and they get the rules, and you give somebody Flying Sidekick or um, Gobby and make sure they know how to play it, they're going to be able to do it. Um, it's more about piloting a deck. Uh, this is about really paying attention to board state and where are we at different times. Um, so again, we're going to be focusing on those four that we talked about on the podcast. Development, parity, winning, and losing. And really try to evaluate these cards and then see what kind of team we're going to put together. All right, let's give it a try. Okay, we have a little unavoidable glare here on Nasty Boy, but we know who he is and what he does by now, that Mr. Sinister Uncommon. Um... If you look at the total picture here, we see a lot of interesting mass characters, and we see um, a lot of interesting bolt characters uh, as well. Um, 
so that's that's sort of part of what's going to inform our strategy here but in general we need to find a few different things now conventional wisdom in magic the gathering a lot of people will talk about the draft strategy of bread which is you get your bombs uh, you get your uh, removal the creature removal you have your this is really going to test me hmm you have your evasion you have your aggro and you have your dudes though some people will call that the dregs but those are just those other cards those playable ones that you include not because you're happy to do it but because that's what you have and you need to make a complete deck somehow uh, other than just filling in the gaps with lands so there's a couple of ways to do this here um, the most important thing is to remember that when we're winning we're pretty much happy to get just about anything out we just need that last little bit to close the door Almost anything can help us do that. There are very few things, things that only maybe give us defensive um, help that won't give us um, something that we want when we're winning. When we're losing, we need cards that can really help uh, turn the table, that can really help stop whatever is, uh, whatever is happening. Um, and we also need cards that are going to help us in development. And... The biggest card that's going to help us in development, and this we're going to start here because it's the beginning of the game, uh, is Professor X. And I'm going to go with uh, Trainer here. Uh, it's cheaper than recruiting young mutants, and um, it does buff, buff the sidekick, so that's something that might help me late game. So not only does this aid me during development, it also aids me later on in the game when things are happening that uh, you know I might need to uh, get a better handle on. Um, the hardest card to find... A, um, we're going to put the ones we're using over here. We'll set the other ones aside over there. But the thing that can be hardest to find is a card that really will just save your skin if you're losing. Let's look here and see if we have anything that will do that for us. As I think about it, one thing that happens often in this game when, when you are behind is that your opponent has managed to cycle some characters through, which means that they have to field them again. Or perhaps it's a when fielded ability that they are really, really just hammering out. So it may make sense for us to take Cerebro's supercomputer. This is the one, of course, where you put it on a character card, it stays there until an effect removes it, and um, your opponent's dice from that card cost a minimum, excuse me, cost a minimum of two energy to field, and that cost can't be reduced. So that is probably a good bet for right now, especially with a couple of those. It's possible that um, we can control two things, and that only costs three masks. That, that could really help us get a little bit better control of the board, because our opponent can't use their energy as efficiently. Now we have a lot of villains out here. We also have some cards that are going to really help us take advantage of our own villains. Mr. Sinister Nasty Boy being uh, an obvious choice there. Now we have a couple masks picked to this point, a five cost and a three cost. Um, I like what Mystique Ageless brings. We're going to be doing things with the prep area anyway, thanks to the Professor X Global. So we might as well get her in the mix. And of course, if we think we're going to be doing some villain shenanigans, we should be taking Mr. Sinister Nasty Boy. So Mystique is a great early buy because she's only three cost. Let's let's look at this. She's a great early buy because she's only three cost, and um, we do want to do a lot with getting dice in our prep area. It's going to happen in this game. So while we only have one of her, she's a good card to take pretty much any time um, because she could be pumped up. She might be able to do just enough to help you win uh, because she's so. Oops. <laughs> Sorry, Mystique. Because she's so inexpensive, she's a good early buy, and she also does provide us masks, which help us feed the Professor X Global. Um, nasty Boy, of course. Great one to slam the door. Great one to chip away uh, when you're at a parity state. Um, you can keep doing damage to your opponent. Now, we don't have the Iron Man Global available here to make anything we want a villain, but we have a few different villains here, including this guy himself. We might be able to take some advantage here. So this is not so much an early buy. Um, early enough, though, you can get to him within the first couple of turns. He's pretty good at parity. Uh, he has good attack stats, so he can attack pretty well on his own. And, um, you know, when you're losing, he could help you slam the door. So uh, especially he can he has a little bit of removal here, too, because, you know, choosing a character to take three damage, that's great. 
Um, plus, I have multiple dice for him. So I picked four characters to this point, and I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight dice. So we are actually in really, really good shape to this point. Let's get rid of the other Mr. Sinisters. Uh, now, inexpensiveness is not a vice in this game. We don't want to uh, have only a couple of dice that we can buy early. We also, now that we have Mr. Sinister, need some other bolts. So the best solution, I think, is to grab this Scarlet Witch here. Um, this is mostly just a playable card. Uh, I don't think we're really planning on taking advantage of this ability where she does damage to opposing X-Men. We need the bolt. Her stats are good enough to make her a solid play early, especially on level two and level three. And um, we just we need more bolts so that we can get to the things that we want to do, like the Mr. Sinister Global. Now we have three more slots to fill here. It's tempting to take Storm Weather Witch, but her ability isn't anything that we really want to write home about. Um, the action die avoidance isn't necessarily something that's going to help us. It's a nice control card, except it's not something, at least in the players that I play with, it's not, it's not something that's impacted the meta um, to this point. It's something that may later, but it's not something in terms of where we are now. So she's a possibility if I need to fill an eighth slot, but uh, at this point I'm not 100% sold on Storm. One character that I really do like here is Nemor. At five cost, he's really not that expensive. He's somebody that really can change the board at parity. It's not going to um, make an impact in terms of what your character or what your opponent has available, but it is going to make a difference in terms of what life total your opponent has. Uh, potentially five damage, uh, not that expensive to field, not that expensive to buy, and uh, if we have other characters out there, Namor cannot be blocked. I think that's a solid pick. Who help, He helps us in multiple uh, parts of the game. So we have six over here. Uh, we don't have a lot of other multiple die cards except for Captain America. Um, let's think about that for now. Um, I have seen Magneto's Hellfire Club used to pretty good effect. Um, he's seven cost, mask. I only have one of him, but I might only need to get one of him out. And the way that this works, if your opponent has no villains in the field, he takes two damage each time he draws one or more dice from his back or her back. I don't know what you're doing there, kids. If I have Nasty Boy on my team, it's possible that my opponent is going to want to avoid using villains. It's a fair shot, anyway. So, I don't think this is actually a bad choice to take here, and that's going to be a selection of mine. Um, actually, as we consider our last spot, let me say, too, about Magneto. Um, if we're at it, this can take a game that's in parity and turn it into a race. That's another thing that I like about this card. It's, so it synergizes well with some other things. It's not an early game buy, but it can help uh, put some pressure on the opponent when they when we're at parity. It can help um, put some pressure on the opponent if I'm losing and they have and they don't have access to villains especially. This might be a little bit more of a situational card, but it's solid in just about every circumstance except for development. So in that sense, I will take it. Remember, when we're talking quadrant theory, a card doesn't have to be amazing in all, in all phases of the game. In fact, it's very rare that we'll find one. The ones that we have had like that so far are the ones that have really impacted the game the most. Um, Black Widow, Sarina, Green Goblin, Gabi, even other forms of Green Goblin like Norman Osborn or uh, Goblin Lord uh, impact the game very well early on their own. And they're good enough that you don't mind drawing them on, you know, turn 10. You're just as happy turn 3 as you are turn 10 or 12, and that's an important facet. So, we have some bolts, we have some masks, and we have a shield with Namor. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of amazing options. We have some Fist characters here who are not bad, but I have one die for each of them, and I have nothing else happening with Fists. We have Vision... Uh, four cost here, when he blocks, I can spin him up a level. This one just prevents damage from mass characters. I don't care for that. I would like Vision maybe a little bit more if I had the Ant-Man Global that allowed me to um, exchange power and toughness, but uh, I do not. He's probably out. Marvel Girl would give me another bolt. She's a superhero, though. 
I don't have another one of those. I mean, I do. I have Captain America superhero, but I don't have a one that I think I'm going to be able to use here. Um, and that kind of takes superhero out of the running. We have two of the follow me's. Emma Frost, a little situational. I have a shield, but she's five cost. Toad, eh, kind of the same deal. I think if I narrow this down here, it really does come between cheap masks, which I have, or Captain America follow me. The only reason I'm tempted on Storm is because she gives me a cheap mask. It's an easy buy. But I do have Professor X that should be able to help me with that. She's also pretty inexpensive to field, though. Captain America is not inexpensive to field. And uh, though his ability kind of mitigates that, when fielded, the next character you field this turn can be fielded for free. This is a hard one to evaluate because but while both of these are playable, neither of them exactly fits in with what this is for. Captain America does give me a shield, but it's double the cost of the storm. The only shield character I have is a single Namor die. But with those sidekicks going through, I don't think I'm going to have too much trouble getting a shield. So I'm going to have to go with Storm Weather Witch in this case. Nothing against dear old Captain America, but I don't believe the situations that this deck is set up for um, are going to synergize well with that Captain America. So here's what we've put together. Mystique Ageless, Professor X Trainer, Mr. Sinister Nasty Boy, Cerebro Supercomputer, Scarlet Witch, Wanda Maximoff, Namor the Submariner, Magneto, Hellfire Club, and Storm, Weather Witch. Now, let's see how the, this might come together in a game state. I'm going to clean up some of these things off to the side, and let's just run a couple simulated turns. All right, so one thing that I neglected to do was uh, pick basic actions. I just went with, for now, Enrage and Relentless. Uh, the globals are pretty universally useful. Of course, on the other side of that, uh, your opponent may be able to do something. I considered Transfer Power. I only do have the one shield character. Uh, I don't know that I have any little weaklings that I'm going to want to uh, uh, really do that with a whole lot. Almost everybody here has pretty decent attack stats. Mystique will, when you take the prep area into uh, consideration. And Storm, I'm not even... Uh, I mean, if all goes well, I'm probably not fielding her. So let's run a couple of simulated turns. This is not as useful as it is, say, in Magic the Gathering. Uh, giving it a good shuffle and doing it a few different times to see how a few turns play out. Because we ha do have the variable nature of the dice. And the dice can mess you up. The nice thing, though, is we do have... A couple of options. If we don't get a bolt, ooh, the baby dragon fell onto uh, Scarlet Witch there. <laughs> if we don't have a bolt, um, I had some Yu-Gi-Oh dice in my dice bag. Anyway, if we don't have a bolt to buy Scarlet Witch, we might have a mask to buy Mystique. Um, but ideally, what we have on our first turn, we're able to do something like buy Scarlet Witch to start some bolts and save a mask to do Professor X on the opponent's turn. Let's see what happens. All right, so this is perfect. I uh, hope, I guess, I'm looking at my video and you can see what I got here. This is pretty much perfect. So I'm going to, I would spend three to buy the Scarlet Witch. I tend to put my transition dice like right at the top. And then I'm going to hold on to that mask. Then my opponent's turn, I'm going to pay that mask and pull two over. So now it's my next turn. You just get so much energy so fast. These sidekicks are in a bad play. Board state-wise, boy, it really depends. This early on, I mean, I have four energy. I could get Mystique. I could get Cerebro. But I think ideally here I'm re-rolling at least one of these sidekicks, but probably two, because I want to get Nasty Boy. And there we go. So, I have one, two, three, four, five, six energy, five of which I can use to buy that nasty boy, one of which I can save 
to again prep a couple of dice on my opponent's turn, which we're going to say is now. Now again, I didn't separate out for the transition area, but we're not really playing. Now, I could already have taken some damage or something. There could have been a sidekick that got through, but uh, it's hard to say. And Mr. Sinister comes up, bolts, in that horrible. Um, I kind of like all the energy here. I, I actually really like all the energy here. Uh, I'm not yet sure what I would buy, but I like it. So let's just see if we can get a character face here. We cannot. But look at all this energy we have to deal with. This opens up so many options for us. We can get that Magneto Hellfire Club. Um, we could buy a Professor X trainer if we think that we're going to need to field some sidekicks. We can buy a Namor. Um, in general, I think the energy curve of this team works pretty well. But uh, the best part is, is that anything that we're going to buy, we should be able to... We have enough energy versatility here, thanks to the question mark, that we would be able to buy it and still prep some stuff on the opponent's turn. So let's say that we go for... Uh, that Namor. Let's make something unblockable. So here's what we spent on my opponent's turn. I can prep two. And once again, because there is no transition die for the inactive player, I can prep two. So, I mean, obviously we know Professor X Global is, is good. I had it available, so that's why I took it. We know now I'm going to roll eight dice, one of which is going to be my Scarlet Witch. We have a chance to get some sidekicks out of the way. We have a chance to get Scarlet Witch in the field. She's a villain. She's going to work well with Dasty Boy. Um, with all of these dice available that we've rolled, I mean, I could re-roll these. We have plenty of things to purchase. So in general, I think this uh, I think this curves out well. I think we have enough early buys. We have the help, of course, from the Professor X Global, which allows us to access some of these other things. Of course, you're giving the same opportunity to your opponent. I could re-roll these two and perhaps get uh, that Magneto out. Plenty of options. The only drawback is that I did not get a character out on turn th by turn three, which could leave me open for something. Now, I did get Scarlet Witch ready to go the very next turn. Uh, Nasty Boy just failed to come up as a character face, and I did have the opportunity to field some sidekicks, and that's just an opportunity that I chose to ignore. So... The cool part about this game that I say many times, and I think this emphasize, is emphasized in a game like this, in draft, where you don't have the perfect deck, is it's not just about the cards you pick when you draft, it's also about the dice you buy when you play. And that's really the cool part about this game. Uh, deck building games like Dominion and Ascension were made because um, people enjoyed the idea of putting the deck itself together and that's what we get in the midst of this game even after we've already chosen what we're bringing so the strategy is twofold and that's really a fun part about this but i hope you have some ideas about sealed or really even just draft i mean this could be i probably wouldn't draft a team exactly like this but it's very possible, depending on what you pulled out and what you were able to buy and which the people around you took before you had an opportunity, you could get a team something like this. It's pretty realistic, and it wouldn't be bad because you have some very serviceable cards. Mystique, Ageless, helpful just about any time. Mr. Sinister, Nasty Boy, helpful just about any time. Cerebro can turn the tide for you. I've seen Hellfire Club used effectively um, in uh, draft situations. Namor. You know, Scarlet Witch and Storm are probably the two weakest ones, but Scarlet Witch still gives us some reliable energy and decent stats for cheap. And Storm, again, just for the energy. We could have gone Captain America there, but I really didn't see the point. So once again, I hope you uh, have some ideas now about playing in limited formats. I hope you see um, uh, some ideas of how to evaluate when cards are going to be able to help you. You know, that Captain America with the heroic was awfully enticing. I did get another heroic character. But if you really consider what we're going to have to go through to get those two heroic characters out at the same time so that we can take advantage of those abilities, um, you know, the cost and then fielding them and then everything else, the value just doesn't seem to be there. So in any case, I'm Dave from the Reserve Pool. Leave your comments below. Please subscribe to us and check out our website for our weekly podcast. We'll see you again soon. Bye. Thank you.